I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we sell Lara going for a drive. Twenty twenty Hyundai Sonata hybrid with a solar roof panel. Horsepower and torque. 150 horsepower, 139 pound-feet of torque. However, combined with the electric motor makes 192 horsepower from a two-liter four-cylinder hybrid engine. So this is not a plug-in hybrid. No, it's a traditional hybrid. However, they put a solar panel on the entire roof. And that helps give you more range so you can kind of plug into the sun. Yes, but not that much more range, and I'll get into that in a second, but it's really cool that we have a solar panel on the friggin' roof. And if this is the first video of ours that you've watched, consider subscribing. We do two car reviews every week, pretty much for the rest of our lives. Thank you. So the roof can actually power all of the auxiliaries in the car. So the radio, the lights, like all the supplementary stuff. And it's even lighter than a panoramic sunroof, even though it's got solar panels. And you can see all the solar panels in the roof. It looks really cool. Like the whole thing is covered in them. And the solar panel can also power the electric motor and then also help with your actual 12 volt battery to prevent discharging. So if you were to leave this out with like your lights on or something like that, it will actually stop that. Okay, so if I park it in the sun all day while I'm at work, how many more kilometers can I get? Okay, so if you park this for six hours a day, I have to be specific, you get approximately three and a half kilometers per day. So then what about 12 hours? You'd actually have to discharge it fully again to recharge it because it's got a really small battery. So you can't just expect a full charge for 12 hours. You need to use that six hours and then charge for another six hours. So say you drove to work three and a half kilometers and let it sit there for six hours. Yes. Then you can drive home for your three and a half kilometers, which should have a full charge. And then if you're home early enough, you can get enough charge for the next day maybe. Theoretically, and you'd have to have full sun every day for the whole year to get about 1300 kilometers of free driving for the whole year. That's like really cool technology. It really is. Like the Fisker Karma had it, and I believe the Toyota Prius also have it, but I don't think they had it in North America. And it's cool that all that solar panel stuff is on a cool car like this that we actually like. Yeah, we I, really like this. <laughs> I personally think this is the best car to get for someone who doesn't care about driving but has to. I would just like to state that this is the best commuter car that you can buy, and I am shocked by how much I like this. Okay, let's get into the reasons why. And I'd like to start with the highway driving assist. Go for it. This has the same stuff that the Palisade, the Telluride, the G90 had. Same with the last Sonata we drove that was not a hybrid. It keeps you in your lanes very well, very good lane keep, and you don't really have to put your hands on the wheel too much, but it doesn't let you take your hands off the wheel as much as the G90 used to. I feel like they cut that down a bit. However, it's definitely still the longest in the industry, and we drove down the DVP, and if you're not familiar with the DVP, it's quite a curvy highway, and I basically barely had to touch the steering wheel at all. Yes, and if we drove on the DVP in a normal time during nine to five, it would be bumper to bumper traffic, which this would also do a great job, and you wouldn't have to do anything. Yeah, so you have adaptive cruise, so you don't even have to touch the pedals, you don't have to touch the steering wheel only about once every minute, so you literally just sit there and get teleported places. And then if you set it to the speed limit, it'll put it to auto and adjust you to whatever speed limit Limit, it sees and then it also has a mode to slow you down for curves you pretty much don't have to drive this car like you just end up places and it's so relaxing like I've been so relaxed every time I drive everywhere yeah the next coolest thing is something that we really don't talk about which is gas mileage yes because stupid good gas mileage it's such a good hybrid yeah so it's supposed to get five liters per hundred kilometers which is about 47 miles per American and so this thing is stupid good on gas. Like you pretty much don't have to fuel it up ever. Well, I mean, you do, Almost. but it drops really, really slowly. Yeah, so you basically start with like around a thousand kilometers, which is a lot of driving. And if you need it for a commuter car because you don't care about driving and you just need to get to work and back, it must be amazing to not have to worry about like filling it up barely ever. Yeah, and we've even seen numbers better than the quoted ones on the highway. So it's been doing an amazing job at just sipping fuel. The next thing that makes this a great daily driver for people who don't care about driving is the 360 camera and the parking camera. There are so many great angles, such great stitching. You can see absolutely everything. 
that parking isn't even an issue. You don't have to be good or anything. Yeah, it's really high res. The stitching's good. I've got no issues with this camera system. It works flawlessly. And it'll zoom in on your back tire or your front tire so you know how close to get to a curb so you won't have to scratch your cool electric-y looking wheels. And since we're talking about cameras, there are cameras in the mirrors to help you with blind spot monitoring. However, those cameras project in your gauge cluster in the left and right bubbles. But I feel like it's a bit laggy, like the frame rate's off a little bit. So I did a comparison of the right bubble and the reverse camera looking at the back wheel, and it is a bit laggy. And while it is a cool feature, I haven't actually really used it. I've been using my mirrors just like every other car. So I think once you own this car, you'd kind of look at them, but I don't really trust looking only at a camera to make lane changes. Yes, and I think this system is much better than Honda's system that's only on the passenger side, which flashes up over your whole infotainment. Yeah, and the funniest part about the gauge cluster in the camera system, there is no RPM gauge because this is a hybrid. Yes, it does have RPMs, but they didn't prioritize that. So the only way to see your RPMs is to have your right turn signal on. Yeah, and then it shows it in like 1.0 times 1,000 RPM. It's so weird. It's and, really weird. And they give you paddles with it too, but you can't even shift because you don't know where red line is. Well, you can shift, but, but you, it, you're you just know, guessing. Yeah, 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 totally guessing. And another cool daily driving thing is it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. But the thing that sucks is that Apple CarPlay isn't full widescreen, even though you've got a cool big widescreen now in these newer Sonatas. Welcome to Android life, bro. Yeah, just like that new Mercedes, I feel like Apple CarPlay is kind of moving backwards, but there are some new updates. So we'll test them out in probably September or something. Yeah, hopefully Android keeps up as well because I haven't seen any new yeah. updates lately. No, we got new wallpapers or something. So, <laughs> yeah. Yo, you got widgets now. Yeah. Welcome to Android again. Did you see that you can now send your key to certain cars to other people oh, over that's, iMessage? That seems like a so bad idea. If I have a new M5, I, and I'm on vacation, I can text my key to a friend and they can use that phone to drive it. That seems like a bad thing. No, no, because you need to use face recognition to send your key. Yeah, and then if you just took a piece of paper and photo printed something, I just that seems like a bad thing. And one of the things that sucks the most about this car is that there's no proximity touch on the door handles. You have to click the button every single time to unlock it or lock it. And to unlock all the doors, you gotta click the button twice. Maybe there's a way to program that, I'm not sure, but at least there's the button. And the last thing about this being a nice car if you don't care about cars, before you drive is that it actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does look really good. We really like the regular Sonata, the non-hybrid, and this looks just as good. Yes, we've got cool body lines again. We've got those cool wraparound taillights. We've got the different front bumper that has the chrome along the bottom. And this one also has active aero flaps in the front bumper, which is totally different than the regular Sonata. And my favorite part of the looks is that this is in white, and this white pops super hard in rainy conditions. Like, the body lines are insane. The fact that you have so many different shades of white to black to gray is so crazy. They did a great job with the body lines on this. And this car being white is the worst car for me because you don't see the headlights as much. But you still kind of can, especially like when it gets darker, but it's not the priority. Well, it's and like saying like a flashlight yeah. isn't working until it's dark. <laughs> yeah, you, you do lose a bit of that chrome stripe that swoops around. Exactly. But you get more body lines in rain, so may maybe it's a good trade-off. <laughs> okay, your turn to drive. Solar panel launch. It's not much like right off the line and then it makes a lot of loud sounds and then it's just kind of okay. It's definitely not the worst. No, it's not the worst, but once you're already rolling, like if I'm gonna floor it right now, pretty slow to downshift and pretty slow to go, but then it's fine. But a lot of the time you're in full electric drive, so you get that little like electric push and you feel extra cool because there's no motor going. Yeah, and this is a type of car that I would just drive in eco mode because it's this type of car. Like I've never put this into sport mode. <laughs> well, I did once for testing purposes and flipped it right back. So let's finish off the looks. Okay, so the other hybrid unique thing that you get on this is the rear spoiler, it's black. And obviously just like every other hybrid, we have hybrid-y looking wheels and these ones are pretty good. Yeah, uh, they're not like super cool, super big, but they definitely suit the car. It looks like Prius-ish pr proportions. Yeah, yeah, but imagine this with like those Taycan Turbo S wheels. <laughs> That'd be the sickest. <laughs> no chance. All right, and what is the Continental recommended tire for the Sonata Hybrid? The Continental Extreme Contact DWS 06. So now that we're done with the looks, we're gonna put it into sport mode for one last time, downshift with my paddles, have no idea what RPM I'm at, and I mean, it's, it's okay through cliche. It's definitely understeery, it's, it is what it is, and it's just very comfortable. That's all I have to say about this car. It is the opposite kind of car 
that should be designed for Cliche Corner. Yes, it is opposite Tycon Turbo S. <laughs> but do you really have any issues driving it, like daily driving it when you zone out behind the wheel and like right on the highway? No, and that's the thing. This is so comfortable to drive. The steering is super light, but it's not like overly light. It's like the exact amount that I want in a car like this. Whereas I think I found the Camry too light. This is just right. And then how about ride quality, suspension? Everything feels okay? Yeah, it feels great, especially on the highway, like going over potholes, bumps, whatever. If you've got potholes on the highway, you got big problems. But in this, not so much. Like it's still really comfortable. And one of the other best parts of this car is that it's not a CVT. It's just a six speed auto. So if I floor it, there's no weirdness. Like I do have to wait for it to downshift, but it still feels like a regular auto and I love that. Yeah, it's not something you can get mad at for waiting for this to kick into gear because it's that kind of car. Exactly. And while you're driving, this does recharge a bit like when you go on the brakes or coast. Do the brake pedal feel a bit weird to you? I guess a little bit more grabby than I would expect. Just a little bit weird to me when parking, but definitely not a deal breaker by any means. No, it's not like ultra weird and there's no way to change that. I don't think it varies by the drive modes. Your drive modes really affect your transmission and your gas pedal. But or I guess, yeah, it is your gas pedal because gas and battery pedal. But you know what this also has is a coast mode. So it'll give you a warning when it thinks it's time for you to let your foot off the throttle and coast. Oh, that's cool. Because you know how electric cars, we had the discussion like very long time ago in the on it's like, do you stay on the throttle or do you let off and coast in like a different gear? Yeah, and Porsche, I believe, sorry to keep bringing it up, prioritizes coasting because I think they figured out that that's more efficient than regen. Depends if you're going like long distances or like only city. Yeah, and this also isn't a full electric car, so it doesn't have that big of a battery, so. So now let's talk about these drive modes. We've got four of them. Eco is the one you want, but we do have custom sport, eco, and smart. However, same problem as we had in the regular Sonata, the gauge transitions are terrible. Yeah, it's the same thing where not every single part of the animation is animating at every frame, but some of it is, so it gives it that laggy look. But do you like the graphics of the gauges? I really do. Energy flow is definitely my favorite gauge, and I love seeing it in the infotainment as well, because you can see exactly what the solar panel is doing, what the brakes are doing, what the battery's doing. It's cool. And the coolest part about the solar panel is there's four modes, completely off, one bar, two bars, or three bars. And when you go under a bridge or something, you can see that the solar panel is not getting any energy and then goes back to full energy. It's a lot of fun. And then the most annoying thing, which I thought was cool at first, but now that I've driven this for longer, it keeps telling me the weather conditions in my gauge cluster. So right now it's mostly cloudy. Yeah, just cover that with a permanent marker. It's just, it's <laughs> always there and I haven't found a way to turn it off. I get it for the solar panel, but it's always there. Like I can see what's around me. And then changing the modes just changes the colors really. Like you still can't get attack in any mode. But what they've changed with this hybrid version is when you click the little menu button on the steering wheel, instead of going through all your driver assist settings and everything like you could on pretty much every other Hyundai Kia Genesis, now you kind of just get to change what's in the right bubble or if you have your navigation or your driver assistance in the middle. But there are still some things that you can change with a different button. So if you hit OK, it'll actually bring up your driver assistance if you select that in your infotainment, which then you can customize it there. But there's a couple things about this infotainment that I really don't like. Can you guess what it is? Well, I know a couple things. Number one, no tuning knob. You have to actually physically press this touch button thing. Yeah, they got rid of all the hard buttons and they put in the LCD buttons. I feel like having hard buttons on the bottom would be nice. And in lower trims of Sonatas, you can get all hard buttons, but there is no lower trim for the hybrid version. And they added a way that you can scroll through your stations, but it's an extra like three clicks. Yeah, it, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Say I'm in my Apple CarPlay. How do I get to the home screen? And just press this button. And then you have to press this button. Yes, I'm it's, used to that for like Android it's stuff. It's always two buttons. They got rid of the hard button so you could go back, but lucky we still have a star so I can program my Apple CarPlay to go right to it. Yeah, so like we said in our original Sonata review, bring back hard buttons. Yes, because these buttons suck and they're even too far. Like you're tall, try to reach that. I mean, I can reach it, but Barely, by, while driving, I'm gonna crash. But lucky for us, we have wireless charging, but no wireless CarPlay, so it kind of cancels itself out. Yeah, and no wireless Android Auto yet, but apparently it's coming in other cars. Okay, how about the rest of the interior? Pretty much the same as the regular Sonata, nothing too different, still really comfortable. The seats are comfortable, but you have an issue with them. Yeah, I just can't get super comfortable in them. They're just not the right fit for me. I would much prefer the seats from the Altima, those space seats. Yeah, and I have no issues with these seats and the layout of this interior is actually really good. We do have our shifter, which is buttons. However, it's all covered in gloss black everywhere and it's filthy. There's only one thing I really don't like about the interior in this model is that you can't option a sunroof, which I totally understand, but I like my sunroofs. Yeah, well, this is a lot better. Okay, so now we should do a couple more tests. Uh, the cup holder test, it fits a monster, but these are two different size cup holders. A small won't fit in this back one, but it'll fit in this front one. And you can also have your phone in the middle. That's pretty except, cool. Except it rattles nonstop. Oh yeah, because it's not fat. You need a little bit of like rubber padding or something. And let's check the visors. This will settle whether the car is great or not interior. Three, two, one. That slid like butter. <laughs> 
All right, so overall, it's great in here. Yes, it is. So with all that stuff out of the way, we should probably get to the price. Well, there's only one price and one trim in Canada. $40,099. Canadian. Yeah, really good price. The fact that this has a solar panel roof and everything in here is so convenient for not caring about driving cars. I think this is pretty much like a no brainer for people who need a new car. Yeah, and it's only a couple thousand dollars more than the top trim of the regular Sonata. And the regular Sonata isn't that exciting to drive. I think the wheels are cooler. I think it does look a little bit better, but I personally would just go for this. Like, yeah, if you're I, going for a Sonata, go for the most hybrid one with the solar roof. And like having this gimmick, is cooler than most gimmicks right now. Until they come out with the N-Line. But I really, really like this car. Like this is one of my favorite cars. This I'm shocked by how much I like this. I know I keep saying that, but like this is such a good car. This is pretty much our next go-to recommendation for people looking for new cars who have to drive through a commute to work and don't care about cars. This is really cool and this will be my recommendation going forward. So let us know what you think of the new Sonata Hybrid. Is the solar roof panel the coolest thing ever? Is there anything that's better than this? And guess the next video right here. Let us know what you think it is. Your guess is as good as ours right now. Could be Tuesday, could be Friday. <laughs> we don't what, know. What day it is today. <laughs>